Did the Nikon Z8 make me a better photographer? Yes. And no. Details coming up. I've had the Z8, or as my friends across the pond would say, my Z8, for just under a month. And I, I can't say that it has made me a better photographer. What it has allowed me to do is capture a lot more images that are keepers onto the cards. Let me explain. This image I just put up I would never have been able to get with the Z7 II. And the reason why is because that bird floated in such a manner that the Z8 was able to autofocus and get the shot I wanted instantly where the Z7 would have been hunting and pecking. Now when I say it didn't make me a better photographer, it's because I already understood that on a sunny day, or at least with the sun out in South Florida on a white bird, I have to underexpose that bird probably two stops. Otherwise, the bird is going to be washed out. The feathers will be washed out and I never would have got the texture in those feathers that I did. Secondly, I already had to understand the relationship between my ISO, my aperture, and my shutter speed in order to capture that image. And also with the Z7 II, it only goes to one eight thousandth of a second, and that was shot at one, I think, 12,800, which slight difference, yes, but I think it was an effective difference. The fact that I already understood all that allowed me to capture that image on the Z8. And so therefore, you can debate, well, it made you a better photographer. I think it allowed me to capture that on the card. Will it make me a better photographer over time? Yeah, I think it will. And the reason why I can say that is because in order to be a better photographer, you have to go out and shoot images. You can watch all the videos, read all the books, do everything you want, and you can learn things, but until you go out and apply it, you're not going to be a better photographer. And since I've had the Z8, there's only been maybe two days that I haven't gone out and used it. And so I'm taking a lot more images. And over time, yes, it's going to make me a better photographer. But instantly out of the box, does buying a camera body like that make you a good photographer? Absolutely not. Now, these are my opinions. I don't get paid by any camera company. I don't have affiliate links. These are my opinions and you're allowed to disagree. In this video, I'd like to give you a few thoughts on what I'm finding with the Z8, things that I like about it, and things that maybe I don't like about it so much. I will say this much, in the three weeks of shooting birds on, by this lake with the Z8, I've gotten more keepers in that three weeks than I did in probably 10 years with other cameras. I'm taking images now that I don't even leave on the on the hard drive that I would have kept before as oh my goodness that's my shot of the month or the shot of the year now I just throw them away because I can get so many of them does that make me a better photographer no because I already knew how to do it but it allowed me the opportunity to get better images and so I guess that's kind of my point is that if you're going to buy a Z8 thinking, or any camera body, really, it's going to make you a better photographer, think twice. You have to already have the skills and the understanding on how to use that camera before it's going to make you a better photographer. I'm not going to be on video as much this morning because I'm having some dental work done this week. And I had started last week and then this week which means that I have a face like Gavin Hardcastle after two hours of sleep. Some of you will get that. Now, I've had a lot of comments because I did that video on should you upgrade or not. And I appreciate all the comments and I got quite a few. 
I got quite a few and let me let me go through and try to answer a couple of them one was about the battery life I, I'm I don't the battery life to me has been fine you know I only go out for about an hour and a half two hours tops and I still have battery life matter of fact I can usually go out twice and still have enough battery life to even go a third time I do find though because they're very hot mornings that when the camera gets hot maybe I don't get quite as much battery life but I still get quite a bit another thing I've been asked about is the weight and because I had a d850 at one time the weight doesn't bother me too much I like the grip of the d850 I mean of the of the z8 I liked it on the d850 I like it on the z8 I like that grip better than I like it on the z7 and again this isn't to compare the Z7 II with the Z8, I've already done that one. But this is just uh, thoughts on what I do like about the Z8 and the grip is one of them. The sensor shield definitely, and you wouldn't think, well, it'd be that big a deal, but when you shoot seascapes and you get sea spray and sand, it is if you want to change lenses. Generally, I put a lens on before I leave the house and I don't change it, but occasionally I will, like let's say I'm shooting a moonrise, I might shoot the landscape or the seascape at one focal length and then the moon at another and blend the moon back in and make it a little bit bigger. Shh, that's just a secret. Don't tell anybody. So in that regard I might switch over from a 20 millimeter lens to a at one time I used the 24 to 200, another time I used the 300 you don't want to make the moon look too big because then it looks dumb. So you have to know how to proportion it right. But anyway, the sensor shield and also every once in a while, you know, when I get home and then I change lenses or take the lens off, I mean, especially when I'm out walking around in the summer like this, I'm so sweaty, I might bend down to take it off and then a bead of sweat might come down and hit that sensor. That happened to me one time. So it can happen. But that sensor shield to protect you from that kind of thing. Now, I, admittedly, I'm more careful of it now and understand it could happen. But sensor shield's another good thing. It's so customizable. You can do just about anything with the Z8. Like I have my function button, one of them set up so that I can use what they call their banks. Uh, my banks are, I have landscape, portrait, action and then um, street photography just walk around photography and so you wouldn't think that was that important well it came in handy one time when I was out here because I was shooting birds and one flew by and I had it on C which is the action and I was able to get the bird in flight and then I noticed another bird that was just sitting on a branch and I could switch switch to portrait mode pretty fast and it changed my ISO from 800 down to uh, it was either 100 or 64 I think 100 and it changed my aperture down to f4 so I didn't have to fuss with it nearly as much and that bird was only there for about 30 seconds and I was able to get it because I could switch modes pretty fast or banks I should say but I was still in the um, animal detect bird eye view, but I could switch to portrait and get that pretty fast. What I'm trying to do in this video is not necessarily give you a review of the Nikon Z8. I'm trying to offer you some thoughts in the way I see it, in the way I perceive that camera body and why I prefer to use it. Strictly my opinion, mind you. I want you to take a look at this photo of one of my grandsons I took a couple years ago. And he came through that playground tube. So his face was dark and he came out into the light. And while he was coming through the tube, I tried to, to obtain focus of his eye and I couldn't really do it. He got out through the light and of course most people 
are going to know that the camera, if you allow it, that the camera is taking an average of the light. It's not necessarily exposing for his face. It's giving a wide, broad exposure. As he comes through that tunnel, then his face lights up because now he's back in the light. And you say, well, that's a nice photo. It is a nice photo. And I was able to get one in focus. Granted, all that happened in, I don't know, 10 seconds at, at most. And you have one shot at it because he's a kid and he only went through the tube one time. Now take a look at this image taken a couple of weeks ago. Similar type thing comes through a tube. All of a sudden his face hits the light. Nice photograph, right? You don't see the other six that I took around it. I took seven frames. Six of them are dead focus. Again, does the Nikon Z8 make me a better photographer? Or does it allow me the opportunity to capture more images? Is it just a tool that works better? That's for you to decide. Now take a look at this image of another grandson playing t-ball. Portrait style image. I took that one with a Tamron 70 to 300 lens that's designed for the Z system on the Z7 II. It's a nice little portrait, right? He's pretty static. Not a problem. I had a couple around it that were in focus because he's not really moving. Camera could pick up focus. Bang, you get it. This next image, he was standing on first base, probably right after he was at bat there. And he was looking towards second base. I don't want to rat him out, but he was looking at a girl. You know how they are. And he turned and looked at me for a half a second. And that's the image. And yes, I was able to get focus but the couple around it were not in focus. I was able to get one. My guess is with the Z8, I would have gotten a couple of more that were in focus and then been able to pick the frame that I wanted. Again, a random thought. One thing that has surprised me a little bit about using the Z8 is the fact that I like taking it out and shooting with it. It's kind of, rekindled in a way uh, me wanting to get up in the mornings and go shoot birds. Well what that means is I'm getting my lazy butt out of bed and I'm going on walking two three miles six days a week in the heat because I'm doing this during July and August in South Florida it's hot and I come back and my shirt is wet. I'm sweating so it's a good workout it's giving me the opportunity to get more exercise. Now, I could do that without the camera, but it's given me an excuse to go out there and do it. And then what happens after that is, I jump in the pool and go for a swim. So it's even more exercise. And in the three weeks or so that I've had the camera, I've lost five pounds. I could probably afford to lose more, but again, it's, it's it's an advantage that I wasn't really expecting. Am I going to keep doing it for months and months? Probably not. But it may get me into a habit of getting my butt out of bed and getting more exercise. So that's just a side note, again, a random thought of something that uh, the Z8 helped me do that I wasn't expecting. I talked briefly about the functionality of the Z8. And I know I keep saying Z8 and Z8, I go back and forth partially because I've got viewers across the pond and around the world that call them Nikon Z8s rather than Nikon Z8s. So I go back and forth. That's why I'm doing it. I, I'm, in, I'm intentionally doing it. I know I'm doing it. So anybody wants to leave me a comment, why are you calling it to? That's why. The same thing was uh, my last video, I was criticized by a few people because the uh, 
the background wasn't completely level. And they were right. And who knows, this behind me may not be level now, too, just by the way I'm sitting with this camera. And yeah, they're right. But you know what? I'm not perfect. And I goofed, and I saw it, and I thought about redoing it. And I thought, eh, no matter what you do, somebody's going to gripe, even if they're right. I also wanted to make reference to the people that are defending the Z7 in some of the comments on the video that I did comparing the Z7 II and the Z8. I wasn't trying to slam the Z7, the Z6, the Z7 II. I'm not trying to slam those cameras. For what they are, they're very good cameras, and I'm not trying to slam them now. I guess my point to a lot of this is when I went from a Pentax K1000 back in the film days to a Nikon Z7 II 30 years later. Did the Nikon Z7 II make me a better photographer? I don't think so. What it did was give me access to better lenses and more features and autofocus, as flawed as it is sometimes, it still had autofocus and it still did work, but I still had to know the basics. And I guess what I'm trying to say in a nice way is if you're watching this video and you're a beginner or you're relatively new to photography and you think, oh, I should go out and buy a Z8, Z9 because uh, they're the best or a Sony A1 or A7R4 or whatever the top Canon model number is now. I'm, I'm not a Canon guy, so I, I don't know all their numbers. My recommendation would be, no, don't do it. Go find a beginner camera and learn about the correlation between your ISO, your aperture, and your shutter speeds, and really understand that. Hone in on that. Learn that. And so the Z7 VII-VIII, because I understand those things, am I an expert in them? No, but I understand them. It allows me to take advantage of my understanding of light. It, it, in my opinion, it allows me to use light better and more to my advantage. One thing that, and it's not just the Z8, it would be any camera, any modern camera that has auto ISO. When I was shooting birds, when I first got the, the Z8 and I was shooting auto ISO, to me that was a mistake. And the reason why, and the reason why I stopped is because a lot of these herons are white and even the spoonbills along the neck are white. And I was finding that when I left it on auto ISO, and the reason why I had it on auto ISO was because they're wading birds and they're along the coast See, I'm using my hands. You're supposed to use your hands in videos. Hands. When they're wading along the coast, a lot of times they're in shadows. And then they take off and they fly out over the water and they hit that sun early in the morning. And it's a, a completely different shutter speed because you want to stay at the same aperture, right? So it's a completely different shutter speed or a completely different ISO. So what was happening was I was staying with the faster shutter speed and it was just going from say ISO 400 to ISO whatever it was going to, 2500, or I should say the opposite. Anyway, when it was going, when it was using auto ISO, on the birds that had white in them, it was blowing out the highlights. And so I had to take it off and I had to, I had to adjust set the ISO for what I thought was a good average between the shade and the brighter areas, which at that time in the morning for me has been anywhere between 500, maybe 400 and 800, maybe as much as 1600, but I've been consistently shooting between 400 and 800 in the mornings. And then I just adjust my shutter. I adjust the shutter speed. And it may, as he gets out over the water, bird gets over the water, you can get to a faster shutter speed. And when they're down in the shadows and they're just waiting, you don't need a fast shutter anyway. You know, I know once they get, they start taking off, you want it at least one over a thousand. I, I've been 
Uh, with the Z8, quite honestly, I've been using between one over 16,000, one over 12,800, one over 8,000. I've been using really fast shutters. And the reason why is because when that bird takes off, not only do you get those wings sharp, you get those droplets of water coming off their feet. And that's why I do it. So that to me is an advantage that the Z8 has, is that fast shutter. And the 20 frame second raw. I like the the quieter, even though it technically doesn't have a shutter. I like the quieter noise when I'm around the birds. When I hit the shutter release, I can hear a faint noise. So I know I'm getting the picture. But it's not loud enough, I don't think, to spook a bird. I can hear it. I don't know. Maybe they can, maybe they can't. But it, that noise from me hitting the shutter release doesn't seem to be enough to spook them. So I like that. Another reason why I like it, and I probably said this after getting the D700, the D750, maybe even the D850, I have a sneaky suspicion that this will be the last camera body I ever, I, I'll ever need or I'll ever get. I, I really believe that because I can't see anything that I would need a camera, anything more that I would need a camera to do than what this does for me. And you could say, well, more megapixels. I don't, I don't you know, I, I looked at the maybe get a, a Fuji 100S because I, I like shooting all rounds. I like shooting variety of subjects. Uh, that's why I didn't go that way. If I was strictly landscape, I, I would, I probably would have went with either the Fuji or I'd have sold my soul and got a Hasselblad. But because I like shooting birds, I like, you know, going out to the park and, and shooting soccer games and t-ball games. And I like shooting portraits. I like, you know, uh, birthday party shots where it's a little dark inside and you know high school sports um, because I, I like shooting a lot of different things I needed an, a, a well-rounded camera and the D850 was that camera and now the Z8 to me has for me for me has replaced that not because I think that the camera itself is that much better than the D850? Honestly, I, I, it, it has more functionality to it, but as far as image quality and all, the difference is the S lenses are better. They just are. Are they 50% better? No, they're not. But they are incrementally better. For someone that just dabbles in photography a little bit, it wouldn't be worth it to you. In, in my opinion, you know, I would stick with the with the D750, D850. I wouldn't, I wouldn't upgrade. But for me, I shoot almost every day. I love shooting something. I love going out with my camera. I just do. It's a passion. It's a hobby. Um, I don't make a lot of money from it, but I occasionally sell prints. And you know, I'm trying to build this YouTube channel. So for me it's worth having that camera. Because I think once I can really master it, which I haven't done yet, I fully admit there's a lot I need to learn about that camera. But once I really fully master that camera, I don't see why I would change. Uh, other people have asked, this is another comment people have asked me. I have the Nikon 20 millimeter, the S lens, the 1.8 lens. I use that for seascapes occasionally for landscapes, mostly seascapes. I have the 24 to 120 f4 S lens, which I use as my travel lens. I use for the birds. Uh, I use occasionally for portraits. Uh, that's, a, that's a really good all around lens. I love that lens. It's probably, if I could only have one lens on that 
Nikon system, it would probably be that lens. I have the 50 millimeter 1.8, which again, is a, it, that might be the best S lens that Nikon makes. But I also have the Voigtlander F2, which I prefer. Incrementally, the Voigtlander is, it just has a slightly different feel and look to it. Slightly, maybe more cinematic and not so technical. My wife didn't like it because I was taking some pictures of her and the grandkids and she said, oh, that lens makes me look so old because it does. It picks up every little, every little wrinkle. So, you know, I have to learn to back off on the texture and the clarity a little bit on some of the portraits, which I've, I've done. I guess what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get down to no more than four or five lenses and have the, and have the Z8. That's my ultimate goal. I'll keep the 20 millimeter, 20 millimeter. I'll keep the 24 to 120. I use the 85, the Nikon 85 1.8 S lens. I use that quite a bit for shooting my grandkids. I keep that. I love that lens. And I use it for landscapes as well. You know, that's a, that's a pretty good all around lens. And I have that Tamron 70 to 300. I recently sold off the 105 macro and I sold off the 300 PF. I have the 24 to 200, which I'm gonna sell, which is a, a good landscape lens. But because uh, I use the 24 to 120 and then the 70 to 300, I have that covered. So I'm gonna get rid of the 24 to 200. So if anybody wants it, send me a note. You know, I'll be happy to sell it to you. But that's about it. I appreciate you listening to my rambling on. Once I start using it a little bit more, I may do another one of these videos. If you have more questions about the Z8, let me know and I'll be happy to talk about it. But those are just some of my random thoughts. Uh, overall, it's a great camera. I just don't see myself wanting to use any other camera. You know, I know Sony guys in Canada got, well, you know, this one's better. Okay, for you it is. I've just always been a Nikon guy. And Nikon doesn't sponsor me. They would they might not even give me the time of day if I asked for it. So, you know, I'm not loyal to Nikon because they do things for me because they certainly don't. Uh, I've just always, other than when I started with the Pentax K1000, I've just always shot Nikon and I've just stayed with it. You know, us older guys, there's probably a lot of us older guys that are in that market, you know, in that market. You know, I weighed it and weighed it and weighed it for a long time, even before I had the, I never got the Z7, I waited until the Z7 II came out. Anyway, please like and subscribe. I appreciate you watching. Again, if I could answer any other of your questions. Let me know. See you soon.